Yes, sir. Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, we're going to do the battle of the workouts. I'm going to go through a comparison chart of the major splits, full body, upper, lower, push-pull legs, and a body part split, and break down for you the positives and the negatives and things that are I think are strong areas and weak areas. Before I get into this topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into videos just like this. All right. Let me minimize this a little bit. Yesterday, I recorded or I made this little handy dandy chart. Uh, before I break things down a little bit, I know some of you guys uh, might have differing opinions than what I have, so that's fine. Let's not start a war over this. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section down below if you think any of these should have been be different. Now, as you see, I got the four major workout types, full body which is, for the sake of this discussion, three days a week. Upper lower, which is basically four days a week. You can do three or four days a week. You can rotate. Uh, but it's basically an A-B split. No matter how you uh, slice it and dice it, it could be um, my upper posterior, just a standard upper lower. Then you have push-pull legs. For sake of discussion, we're going to frame this as something that's run five to six days a week because that's typically what a push-pull leg split is run. And then we have a body part split, which basically is typically a four-day type of split, but obviously there's other variations. Now, I have uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven different uh, ways we're going to analyze these, and this could be a longer video, so I'll try to move along as quickly as possible. So when it comes to this uh, yellow, the exclamation point, ignore that. That's just kind of neutral, average, nothing bothersome, nothing crazy, nothing amazing, just kind of middle of the road. You know, that that's not a bad thing. Uh, green is generally superior and red is uh, a little bit, you know, of a problem, you know, so we're not trying to amplify this into... Uh, red means nightmare, avoid, or green means, you know, the, the best. This is just a general analysis. So let's start with the first thing, time in gym. And I'm going to go from left to right. Time in gym uh, for the full body, you, basically what you're doing is you're combined, you're, because you're only working three days a week, you're cramming a lot of things into, into a workout day. So full body workouts tend to be longer in the gym now, just because I give it a red, uh, a red X, doesn't mean I'm saying don't do this. Okay, I'm just all I'm saying, and th this isn't for everyone at all times. This is speaking generally from my experience, 38 years of of lifting, dealing with clients, dealing with people, building workouts. So, a red X time in gym for full body. It tends to be the longest of any of the workouts, um, especially the more advanced or experienced you get, the stronger you get, the more warm up sets you get. Full body can take a little bit of time, so just know that headed in. Upper lower and push pull legs time in gym. Um, these are generally pretty reasonable, you know, nothing unusual, nothing bad. A body part split uh, is generally probably the most, you know, opens the door to be the most uh, easy as far or, or quickest as far as time in gym. Usually you can structure things to get in and get out because you have that razor or excuse me, razor. You have that laser like focus, <clears throat> you know, on say chest and triceps. You can get in hit them and get out, you know, usually in a reasonable amount of time. One might argue that an upper lower, you know, would be equivalent. But the problem with that is, you know, uh, you the uppers can, if you just do a straight upper lower, the uppers can be stuffed with chest, shoulder, back, and arms. And that's a lot to stuff into a workout. If you do my system where you have upper posterior, uh, posterior days of legs and back, and those can tend to be longer as well. So upper lowers don't quite compare to the push or to the body part split. And push-pull legs, 
basically the push pull legs is just a derivative of a body part split. The only difference, and that might upset some of you, but it's true. The only difference is that a push is combining chest, shoulders, and arm or um, chest, shoulders, and triceps. So that can kind of get cloggy a little bit. It can kind of get overstuffed. So the push pull legs, I almost gave it a green, you know, as being uh, really good for time in gym, but that push session uh, can can get a little bit long. Now intensity. Intensity in this case doesn't mean weight relative to one rep max. It means how intense are the workouts in a general sense. Now, for a beginner, an upper lower can can be pretty, you know, a, a pretty solid, pretty solid on the intensity scale. Not too intense at all. You're breaking things up a little bit, uh, and in my opinion, an upper lower is probably the the easiest way to to uh, easiest on the intensity scale. A full body workout uh, generally has, because you only have three training days a week, generally has more compounds in the mix. So it has a tendency to be more neutral, uh, you know, on the intensity scale. Push-pull legs. Uh, the issue here is you're training five or six days a week, and that can really, really increase the intensity or feel of the workout. That's a lot of uh, brutality during the course of a week. And with a body part split, if you're more on the uh, more a beginner, a body part split with that focus on one area doing four, you know, basically four ish exercises. Let's use chest, for example. Uh, you can really beat down that area. It can be harder to recover from. You can see a lot of soreness. And then uh, when you move on to the, you know, the complementary body parts like a, the triceps. You probably have a lot of soreness or, or tightness or pump already, and it can really, really be uh, pretty intense when you're a beginner and haven't built any work capacity and haven't got used to uh, the demands of workouts, you know, from a muscle soreness standpoint. Uh, intensity for a more experienced lifter. A full body workout can get more intense because you're doing more compounds generally per workout. The weight is heavier. You have more warm-up sets, just more time in gym and more compounds. So I have found for experienced lifters, full body workouts can be more challenging. And along those same lines, a push-pull legs can be more challenging uh, from an intensity standpoint for experienced lifters because you're training five to six days a week with uh, with a lot of brutality, a lot of hard work. And I don't believe it, it uh, facilitates enough rest. Now, body part split um, for an experienced lifter, that's just middle of the road, nothing nothing uh, bad, nothing good. It's just kind of average intensity. The intensity is what you make it. An upper lower, uh, I think, for more experienced lifter, breaks up that intensity a little bit. I prefer my way, upper posterior. Um, yes, you're going to be working hard as an experienced lifter either way. I just feel an upper lower is a good mix. It has the right amount of training days and uh, the right amount of compounds per day. I just feel it's uh, it's just superior for an experienced lifter when it comes to intensity. Now, overall weekly volume. This is uh, overall sets and overall sets per body part. A full body workout because you're training only three days a week. And I don't mean only to be a negative. It's still a very viable way to train. But because you're only training three days a week compared to the rest of the workouts uh, that we're looking at, tends to be lower volume. And if you want to move the volume up, say you want to do 12 total sets per chest for chest per week or back or whatever, you're going to have a hell of a long workout uh, with a full body. Now, weekly volume upper, lower, and body part split. You're generally training four days a week. You have plenty of room in both of those to, to get in a quality amount of volume. Push-pull legs is going to win the volume uh, you know, uh, race. It's easier to get in volume, weekly volume, on a push-pull legs, whether it's a five-day rotation or a six-day rotation. A five-day rotation, you simply rotate you can have three push. Uh, you can have three workouts or six workouts, two variations of each push pull legs, and 
Uh, you can insert two rest days where you need to, you know, kind of use a flexible schedule. But the push-pull legs is going to facilitate or open the door to use more volume. So if you're somebody that likes to use more volume, the push-pull legs uh, five to five days a week is probably optimal. I really don't like training six days a week. Let's assume it's five days a week. It still opens the door to more volume. Now, flexibility. This isn't fix, physical flexibility. This is program flexibility. A full body workout, you're going to have a limited number of exercises and a limited number of training days. So it becomes harder to squeeze in a, a greater degree of flexibility when it comes to exercise selection. When it comes to hypertrophy, and even strength training, having a little bit of exercise variety in the mix is not a bad thing. Full body just kind of pipelines you into more limited number of exercises. There are ways to get around this, obviously. You could use an A and B workout. So you could have full body week one, full body week two, and work in some exercise variety. But it's still less the less flexible uh, program or training style of all of these. Upper, lower, push, pull, legs, and body parts split all allow a reasonable amount of flexibility because you have enough training days per week. You have room to breathe a little bit. You don't have to stuff everything uh, into a limited number of workouts. An upper, lower, training four days a week, or my style, the upper posterior, uh, you can get in um, you know, a good number of exercises per body part per week. Now, recovery, which one of these is easiest and hardest to recover from? I would say a body part split gets the green check, easiest to recover from. Uh, you get a, a whole week between workouts. Now, push-pull legs, you are hammering yourself five to six days a week. From a cumulative fatigue standpoint, it can be a, a lot to recover from. During my 38 years of training, for me personally, when my strength got to a, an intermediate level, running a push-pull legs became the hardest. I felt the most beat up uh, running a push-pull legs over time when that cumulative stress kind of started to mount. Recovery is generally fine from a full body or upper lower. I would give the nod slightly to an upper lower of a full body. If you're new to lifting, and uh, you go in on Monday and do your three sets of squats, you might feel pretty darn sore come Wednesday, but there are ways around this. You could do leg extensions and then maybe do leg press on Friday. But I would say um, recovery is about middle of the road for full body. Now, muscle protein synthesis, this was all the rage for a long time. Uh, muscle protein synthesis, basically, it basically it showed that um, there was a benefit to training more frequently. Uh, because of the muscle protein synthesis window after a workout, I believe it was like 48 hours or something like that. The problem with this whole line of thinking is that it's only one variable out of uh, nearly, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of variables, training variables. So the variable of muscle protein synthesis was elevated to be almost a God tier level. The only thing that mattered uh, level standard, and, and and that's not true at all. But for those of you obsessed with muscle protein synthesis and frequency, obviously full body gets the nod. Push pull legs and upper lower are, um, you know, they provide some frequency. You're training a body part more than once a week, and a body part split would be the big red X because you're training everything only one day a week. Now there are ways around this. You could have a three-day split where you do uh, every other day, or you could have, uh, you know, two on, one off, one on, one off, where you're doing like a, you know, three workouts over five days or four workouts over five days. So body part split, you could still work in frequency. Um, it might push it a, to be a little bit more intense, close to a push-pull legs level. But still, in general, most people train body parts once a week. Exercise variety. I touched on this um, earlier. Exercise variety uh, is a little bit more challenging with a full body. Uh, you can still get creative, and it's pretty smooth with upper, lower, push, pull, legs, and a body part split. One thing I failed to mention about flexibility 
is that with an upper lower, you can be more flexible with your schedule. You can insert rest days where you need to. With a push-pull legs, you can insert rest days where you need to. Uh, I tell my clients to use upper lowers and push-pull legs as a flexible schedule. So as long as you follow the order of the workouts, you can insert rest days where you need to. So that provides a little bit more flexibility. Now, pure strength. If you're just after pure strength, um, you know, and we obviously understand that pure strength, you need to have some muscle building in the mix. You can't be strong without a muscle base. So that's just established that. Pure strength, I think an upper lower wins the race here just because I find it to be most conducive and a good mix between frequency uh, and intensity. Uh, you can do a lot of creative things with an upper lower. You can have more of a volume day, more of a, a lower rep day. It's easier to work in different forms of periodization into an upper lower. You can do that on a push-pull legs. The problem is you're, you're hammering so many days a week. I don't necessarily feel that's best for strength. On the other hand, with a full body, I don't really feel that's best for strength. This doesn't mean you can't build a lot of strength on any of these workouts. You certainly can. You don't if your if your goal is just to get pretty darn strong, you know, in all of your major lifts, any of these will work just fine. I just feel an upper lower is most conducive, and everything else is is just a little bit behind. Uh, but I, I built my strength on nothing more than a body part split for the most part, and occasional push pull legs over the years. Pure muscle standpoint. Uh, simply mostly because of exercise variety and the volume you can get in over a weekly basis, I have to give the nod to uh, everything but a full body. And the full body is, um, it's not bad. I'm not marking it as bad. I just think all the other splits are superior. We have to look at all the variables that you know work for building all the other variables that are in play for hypertrophy, exercise variety. Um, uh, being able to, you know, push with some degree of intensity, you know, on a full body, if you have a number of compound movements in the lift, it's, it's harder, you know, harder to focus. You can lose some of your focus. You can, you can kind of, uh, have a little bit more fall off, um, exercise, you know, having in a reasonable amount of volume, a reasonable amount of, uh, being able to put in a reasonable effort and some reasonable exercise variety just make everything slightly more superior than a full body workout. Sustainability. Can you keep doing this program? Body part splits, I would argue, are something that are pretty sustainable because of your ability to recover. Take a week between workouts. I feel upper lowers are pretty sustainable, especially if you use them as more of a flexible schedule. Full body, um, you know, it gets a yellow because the stronger you get, the more warm-ups you get, the longer time in gym you get. And for some people, it just doesn't work out well. So I can't give it a green uh, because of that. Push-pull legs, the stronger you get, you know, you're going, if you're looking at training five to six days a week, it's simply not optimal. You're going to beat the living crap out of your body eventually. I don't think it's, I think it's the least sustainable of all these. So as you can see, I didn't just go in in each column and give one green, one red, you know, and two yellows. I, I tried to be as fair as possible. And when you look at things, um, I, I didn't have, I, I didn't, you know, I tried to be bias free. I just tried to analyze these things individually the best I could. And until right now, I haven't looked at the big picture of what I have of this analysis or what I have produced. And if you look at it, uh, the upper lower three, six, seven of 11 get the green checks. So I think, uh, I think if you look at all the variables, the upper lower is a really good way to train. Um, I think the full body is certainly a reasonable way to train, but there are things that can be restrictive time in gym harder to hit weekly volume, harder to use these when you're more experienced and they're not as flexible, uh, you know, from a workout standpoint or, a, you know, exercise variety standpoint. And the uh, the body part split, you have six green check marks and one red check mark. 
overall, you know, I, I think this is pretty, this fall is pretty in line with my philosophies. Uh, I believe a body parts, most of my clients get body part splits or upper lowers, push pull legs. A lot of my younger clients that have good recovery and, and good drive uh, use those as well. And I tend to only give full body workouts to those that really like them. At the end of the day, I want you guys to understand that I have no horse in this race. It really doesn't matter what you use. It's the important thing I've taught over the years on the Massive Iron Channel is use the program you like. At the end of the day, after four or five years, it doesn't matter what program you use. It doesn't matter. If you train hard, you train consistently, you have a good exercise selection, your nutrition is nailed, you work on form, none of this stuff matters. I simply present this stuff to you or not, the workout you choose doesn't matter. I simply present this information to you to give you guys some things to think about. So, guys, hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. If you made it this far in this video and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate the support. So, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.